God, we haven't done an episode MLP recording in like forever. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, it's called that dry spell between seasons. You know, that thing in Japan that they don't have. Yep, it's called I Hate It. So. <laughs> and now we're back and ready for more. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 5, Episodes 1 and 2, The Cutie Map. Oh, that's what it was called. <laughs> I went back and looked. <laughs> Thank you. Because I thought it was called the Cutie Markless. <laughs> that would have been an appropriate name too, and it probably was on the slate. So, now on to the episode. I thought it was pretty good, and the themes were well handled. There was a lot of little things going on. And also, why didn't that map appear before? Because they mentioned that they are still wondering what's going on, and then they sit down and, re and react like this map has come out of nowhere. And I'm like, okay, there had to have been a point before this that you all, including Spike, sat in your thrones. <laughs> yes, but they may not have sat in them all at the exact same time, or perhaps they needed to sit in them in a particular order. Also, maybe the map wasn't ready to send them somewhere yet. Even though, obviously, this place has been an issue for a while. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, and then there's that wonderful moment where Pinkie Pie basically goes, I can see my house! And then Spike goes, gosh! And Pinkie's all sad. Yes, we get the giant monster rampaging, um, Equestria. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of Pinkie, she is well written in this episode. Yay! I need to look at the writer. <laughs> yes, because... She was intelligent, she was funny, she felt very in character. I love the whole sneaking into town thing, the ninja-ness and the hiding under rocks. And that makes sense for an earth pony, especially one who grew up on a rock farm. Mm-hmm. And her ability to sneak underneath that big boulder of a rock. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that whole, I know smiles. Those are not smiles. Yeah, those are terrifying grimaces. <laughs> Because even before we got to the town, I was like, that's a big-ass equal sign with a dot end. Are we doing math? Oh, wait, this is evil. It must be evil. Something evil's going on here. Or as the Fritz saying goes, something evil's afoot. <laughs> 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 this is unjust. This is humane. This town's so plain, it's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's Rarity's reaction. <laughs> well, you basically have two rows of six cottages and then Starlight Glimmer's cottage at the end. Kind of funny how every pony who joins, the whole village helps to build them their own cottage, but we only have 13 cottages. Hmm, interesting point there. But yeah, I love how Pinkie Pie's suspicions are almost immediately, you know, there. It's like, something's not right here. I know smiles, as you stated, and those aren't smiles. <laughs> And then there's Fluttershy, who's like, well, it doesn't seem that bad to me. I'm like, Fluttershy, you need to get your senses checked. <laughs> well, everything is quiet and pleasant seeming and calm. All things that Fluttershy likes. You know, she didn't know the cost or the cause. And then everyone has the same exact cutie mark. And you're like, whoa. Oh, a new question just popped into my head. There were some foals in this episode that had uh, the equal sign key mark did they have cutie marks before or were those just put on them already because in this quote unquote society you don't earn your cutie mark because you don't need one because you don't have a special talent i was theorizing that they were given so that that way they never had the chance to be corrupted by a true cutie mark because, you know, what right-thinking cultist wants their children straying from the cult path? And yay to My Little Pony for going with a cult episode in a kid's show. <laughs> I don't think I've seen that since Rescue Rangers. Uh, yeah, and I see you beginning the vibe from the places I inhabit online that everyone's even went communist. I'm like, that's not communism. That's a dictatorship if you're going to um, point it to anything because we have one ruler who's ordering everyone else to believe or be the same. That's not how communism works. <laughs> no, but it has a lot in common with the common Western perception of what communism is, which is forced equality and conformity. Though with this whole theme of conformity versus individuality, I have a feeling this one's not going to make it to the Japan release. 
That, or are they going to do some heavy editing to the dialogue <laughs> and make it something else entirely? I, I don't think you can make editing heavy enough to change the entire concept of... Oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Just thinking of some 4Kids localization jobs. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I told you you should have used an invisible tank. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Okay, back to the creepy town. Yes. Oh, poor Pinkie Pie, when they made her eat all those undesirable, probably dry as heck muffins. <laughs> mm -hmm. Though, you would think that Applejack would be a pretty good candidate for helping with that. Though, going back to the concept of the muffins here real quick, before we got to the whole how the cutie marks got taken away, I accidentally caught glimpses of parts of this episode, mainly still pictures, and I saw that the main six had the um, equal sign on their flanks, and I was like, okay, so I know at one point in this episode they're going to end up like that. How does that happen? Uh, will it be these muffins? Because they're kind of, quote unquote, being forced to eat them. And then everyone forces Pinkie Pie to eat them. So is she going to be the first one to lose a cutie mark? Because... As I was going along, I was thinking, okay, which one of the main six going to lose the key mark first? I'm betting on Fluttershy. I was betting there too, but my whole thing with the muffins, and before we knew how everyone lost, gave up, whatever, their cutie marks, I was thinking that everyone was just voluntarily not using their special talents. So I actually thought that Sugar Bell wasn't a very good cook, and the reason that Double Diamond was giving her that look was because Double Diamond was actually an excellent pastry chef. <laughs> but he couldn't be an excellent pastry chef for, in order for everyone to be equal. I didn't think that at all. I thought um, Double Diamond was the second in command. I'm spying on everyone to keep everything kosher. <laughs> well, that too. But the look came after that her specific line of, well, at least no better than any pony else. Mm. And speaking of Double Diamond, I can't believe how long it took me to realize, wait a minute, he skis? And his name's Double Diamond. Why didn't I get that sooner? Because <laughs> it didn't take me until a couple hours, maybe a little bit after the episode, and then it hit me, I was like, oh yeah, Double I get it now! <laughs> <laughs> Like I mentioned when you and I first started discussing these two episodes, it reminded me of a short story that I read in school where equality was forced onto everyone. You know, a f very fake inequality because you could tell like which of the dancers was most beautiful because her mask was the ugliest. And it was all imposed from the outside with one person being in charge and enforcing that equality on everyone else for their own good. Mm -hmm. Like I said, this feels more like a dictatorship to me than anything else. Or a cult, and how you pointed out, I was like, yeah, that kind of works as a, yeah, it's probably more closely resembling a cult um, structure of, everyone follow me, believe in me, I will make everything better. Friend true friendship comes from everyone being the same. <laughs> no, that's cloning. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And let's not forget we're all locked in a cabin for brainwashing. Yeah, that sounds a lot like a cult. <laughs> and it suddenly reminded me of a scene from, I can't remember which one of the movies it was, but it was one of the Adam Family movies where the kids were at a camp and they were being brainwashed. It was great. The second one. Yeah, they were locked in a cabin. They're like, how are we going to, well, manage. But it's Disney. <laughs> I love how everyone kind of goes, we need to figure out a way out of here. How about we pretend we were just, no one will believe us. They'll believe one of us. And everyone looks at Fluttershy. <laughs> and my first thought at that point was like, Fluttershy's not that good at lying. Oh, wait. <laughs> no, Fluttershy isn't very good at lying. But she had been saying since they got there how nice the town was and how nice the ponies were. Which is why she was going to be someone who was believable. And why before anyone lost their cutie marks, she was my choice for... Okay, yeah, first victim. Yeah. Oh, going back to that, when they actually, we actually find out how they lose their cutie marks, the whole going to the secret room where we keep all of our cutie marks when we get them taken away from us because we don't need our special talents anymore. And then my bet was lost because first one to lose it, Twilight Sparkle? <laughs> like, um, 
I would have thought that we'd take out the entourage before we took out the princess, but no, let's just go straight for the top. Yeah, and my thought was like, how is this? I mean, you know, she's an alicord with the spell, since we find out later it's an actual spell, has nothing to do with that stick. That Would this spell also work on the princesses as well? <laughs> Well, since it worked on Twilight, it would definitely work on Cadence. The question is if it would work on the born alicorns, Celestia and Luna, as opposed to the ascended alicorns. Mm. And this scene also brings up, I think, some magical items we're going to be running into this season. Yes, and also the fact that we have Eastern unicorns, so we have Eastern unicorn philosophy, and we're going to have the eight magical items of Meadowbrook, instead of the elements of harmony or the six keys or whatever our MacGuffin for the season is. Yeah, the question is, will it be a MacGuffin for the good guys or a MacGuffin for the bad guys? Mm. If they're tools, they're probably neutral, so it could go either way. Mm -hmm. And then we get the end of the first episode with their key marks being taken away, and then we go back to the cabin, and I wouldn't have told Fluttershy, go and get our key marks! I would have said, Fluttershy, open the door. Because <laughs> that's probably a simpler task than... Go up that mountain, go into the dark cave, and get our cuter marks for us. But we saw guards standing outside of the cottage. Which begs the question, if there are only 13 cottages and one of them is the brainwashing cell, where are these ponies living? <laughs> but we saw there were two guards, so we could theoretically assume that the guards are posted around the clock, and even if they're not, there's no vantage point where the main six can tell that from inside their prison. So, hmm, do we have Fluttershy turn around and have to take out possibly several guards who would call for more help in order to try to open the door, and then they still have to go get their cutie marks? Or do we just send her to the completely unguarded, yet scary cave to get the cutie marks? Hmm, oh well. Back inside the cabin, we get that great moment of, oh, this is just a barrel of laughs. Laughs don't come in a barrel. <laughs> I wish I could remember the entirety of that line, because I can't remember the rest because it was kind of scientific stuff. Yes, it's your body's reaction to the feeling of delight. Well, it was more specific stuff like diaphragm and stuff like that, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, that was awesome! <laughs> oh, we now get taken into Starlight's home, where apparently new people get to stay until the house is built. Also, at no time did I actually see any construction work or signs that there was construction work. So when were they planning on starting her? <laughs> yeah, you would think that they would start the very first day because if you manage to get all of them to join, you have six new cottages to build. Mm -hmm. But we also get to find out a secret about the main villain. Yes, we get to find out that she really is a villain and not just an idealistic zealot. Because right up until that point, I was kind of hoping she was a changeling, because she definitely was false from the very beginning. It was very obvious that she wasn't in the same state as the other ponies. Mm -hmm, I noticed that as well. And that she was in charge, very much in charge. They made it very clear during the song when she fixed the one pony's hair and corrected the other pony's dancing, and her reaction of, Oh, when everyone sees that a alicorn princess gave up her cutie mark, this will further our cause so much. I'm like, oh great, we have a cause. <laughs> That's never a good sign. Mm -hmm. But I just want changelings back. So I was like, oh, come on, be a changeling. And then when it's paint, I'm like, mm, a changeling wouldn't bother with paint. Dang it. <laughs> Definitely not a changeling. And I just thought of something. Rain would be a real problem for her. <laughs> and another comparison of like, wait a minute. The evil witch of the West? <laughs> well, you would think if you're going through that much effort that you would invest in some waterproof paint as opposed to some cosmetics. Mm-hmm. Because even normal sweat would start taking that stuff off. Mm-hmm. Though, you know, they may not have waterproof makeup. Because, I mean, did you see Rarity's mascara running? She is too much of a fashionista to make that mistake. Therefore, waterproof mascara does not exist. But that does bring up the question of, why was there a bucket in her room, and what was she doing with it to have it splash all over her? Because it was clearly all over her. <laughs> plot device. Specifically there as a plot device. Mm -hmm. I also like that she dodged the um, bucket when Fluttershy tries to reveal her, but she still gets some on her. Well, Fluttershy would have had a better chance if she hadn't said anything and just dropped the bucket. Mm -hmm. But we know Fluttershy. She likes to give warnings. Um, excuse me. Is it okay if I, um, 
tie you up against your will? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's so cute. Anything for you, Fluttershy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just made too many people happy. Okay. <laughs> I know, I know. I gotta remember to think before I speak on these pony ones. <laughs> so, yeah, and we start ramping up to the final chase. And I love how Rainbow Dash says, Let's go, everyone! And then everyone passes her, and she's like, I'm going as fast as I can! And then she realizes her friends catch up to her, and she goes, Dang it! <laughs> yeah, that really doesn't seem fair, though. Because everyone else was going faster than them. Even, well, not even before, because they didn't follow the others because Fluttershy told them their cutie marks weren't in the vault. But everyone else managed to run to the vault pretty quickly, because they ran to the vault, got their cutie marks. You know, some of them came back to the cottage, and some of them were still in the village because not everyone ran to the vault. But they all managed to do that, you know, and the first half of that run was before they had their cutie marks. So I think. That was a little overplaying the kryptonite. But that does bring up the nice fact that all the main six did was actually just reveal what was going on to the people, and the people actually did it themselves. The main six actually weren't the people who defeated the big baddie. No, they weren't, and I think that's going to be a lot of the theme for this season, because if you're spreading the magic of friendship, you can't go in and forcibly fix things. Friendship doesn't work that way. And I actually really like that about this episode because it's another nice change up to the formula. They usually introduce what they're planning to do to change the formula in the season opener. Yeah, and, and another change to the formula is the villain isn't settled at the end of the episode. She wasn't blasted by the elements of harmony. She wasn't rainbow powered into submission. She wasn't re-imprisoned. She wasn't even captured. She got away. Yeah, into some caves, which both me and you are like, Changelings? <laughs> <laughs> Can't help it, we want more changelings. Yes, because the comics were okay, but we're like, no, we want actual show canon changelings. We want to see the queen again, we want to see her animated, we want her back, for the love of God. She, she had a terrible plan, I don't care, I want her back. <laughs> so, Starlight Glimmer. I, I know it's a bit of a stretch, but it kind of rhymes with Sunset Shimmer. <laughs> Also, I found um, Fluttershy's comment when they were still locked up in the brainwashing cell of, even tweets don't make sense anymore, because I was thinking of Twitter. <laughs> That's a good one. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> like, tweets ever made any sense. I... <laughs> no. And let's go back to the appearance of every pony. We have one hairstyle for stallions one hairstyle for foals, and three hairstyles for mares. Mm. This had to be, like, the easiest animation ever. Everybody's just a recolor! <laughs> and slightly resized, but that all can be done in the computer without much hassle. <laughs> yes. And let's rewind all the way back to the beginning of the episode, though this might fall under final thoughts, where we're all sitting around the Hall of Justice. I was a little disappointed at that point because I'm like, you know, sometimes I'm disappointed when I'm right. Did I really have to predict this so closely? Yeah. Yeah, I did. All right, so we get sent out by a map. And we're not technologically advanced enough to have communicators, so now we've turned our cutie marks into communicators. <laughs> and that's probably going to be a whole nother toy line with flashing light action cutie marks. Yeah, apparently they're ne it's now being called the booty call. Of course it is. And I know this kind of falls into the category of questioning Pinkie Pie, mm -hmm. but how does Party Favor manage to look through those damn balloons? <laughs> also, how many people are going to ship him and Pinkie? Because if I could see it happening, it's probably already happened. <laughs> Because I don't, I don't do ships, and even I was going, yeah, that's going to be shipped. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was like, wait a minute, they're kind of like, it, to me, it's like, at first I was like, oh, they're just going to have these other characters be like the main six. And then I was like, oh, there's some differences there, that's good, that's a relief. But yeah, I'm like, I can see that, that's definitely something that probably has already happened. Considering just from the previews, people started 
coming up with theories and doing fan art and all this other stuff just from a preview of the song from this episode. <laughs> of course, because that's what the community does. It speculates and it creates art. <laughs> uh, so, any final thoughts? <laughs> um, Enjoyable season opener overall. It felt really balanced, and I kind of mean that both in the pacing and in the story arc overall and the fact that we don't have a total resolution and we definitely have a chance for Starlight Glimmer to come back especially as a personal enemy of Twilight Sparkle because I studied that spell for years how can you cast it which also gives us some insight into why she might why she wanted to do this whole equalizing thing well I can't master this spell, therefore I'm not good enough. So the way to make myself better is to make everyone else worse, because then I'm better by default and I don't have to actually do anything because I'm obviously perfect. Hmm. Well, overall I like the episode as well. I thought it was a pretty good opener. It's not the best opener, it's not the weakest opener. It's kind of funny it sits right in the middle. Because <laughs> to me, like middle and average and center also are around the same thing as equal. So... <laughs> In my head, it all kind of fit together with the whole theme of the episode as well. Mm -hmm. And I like the fact that we're getting back to the, at least the main characters being written in character. Everyone actually was in character throughout this. The only characters that I thought were slightly caricatured, and they, mainly because they didn't get a lot of screen time, was Rainbow Dash. It was mostly Rainbow Dash, because she was mostly stuck to her, I don't like this kind of thing, I'm Rainbow Dash kind of lines. Which is a part of her personality, but she does have more depth than that. Mm -hmm. Though it does bring up the fact that you do not want to bring any individual of the main six to negotiation. <laughs> because they all have flaws that could really be a problem during negotiations. Rainbow Dash, too brash, not listening to someone else. Fluttershy, too meek, will most likely agree with everything the other person is saying. Twilight Sparkle will get neurotic at one point. <laughs> Applejack is a little too... um blunt in her honesty to make a good negotiator. Rarity's a little too hung up on appearances. And Pinkie Pie is easily distracted by shiny objects. Oh look, a shiny- I mean- uh, we're still recording, right? <laughs> but yeah, but all of them together make one good negotiator. Though that does remind me of something that I thought of real quick when when Twilight Sparkle basically in a way said we're all one- we're pretty much like one pony. I'm like, are we like gonna get a fusion somewhere? <laughs> But, like I said, overall, I liked the episodes, and that was a pretty good opener. If we do get a fusion, I think it's going to be a fusion of power and spirit, not a physical fusion. You know, because this is still an American show, not a Japanese show. We're not going to have fusion earrings. We're not going to have them all come together like some sort of weird mecha. Okay, so I did re-watch this because of the comment you made before regarding how Starlight needed to have her magic. And we do see the unicorns using basic unicorn magic, you know, where you, you lift stuff, you open a door, that type of thing. So apparently standard average magic is okay, you just can't have your specialty magic. Which is probably why Twilight was in such bad shape, because her specialty is magic. It also makes it so the Pegasus can still fly, but not very fast or very high. Well, the Griffins don't have cutie marks, and they fly just fine. Well, that's a discussion for another video. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on My Little Pony. Friendship is Magic, Season 5, Episodes 1 and 2, The Cutie Map. Thanks for listening. If you like Lux's art, you can find him on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Want to keep up to date with what we're doing with these podcasts? You can follow us on Tumblr really like this podcast? Leave a friendly comment below. Also, this is YouTube, so please subscribe. Really, really like Lux's art and would like some of your own? He's currently open for commissions. All links in the description. Well, there is an American show where fusion happens. Steven Universe. Okay, children's show? Yeah, that's a children's show, but I'm going to edit that out because like, I just may have spoiled something for you in Steven Universe. I... <laughs> Yeah, maybe. Thanks a lot. You and spoilers, seriously. Sorry. Have you finished watching Cute High Earth Defense Club, love? Yes. We can talk about that after. Damn it! Because <laughs> I was going to spoil it for you. <laughs> just to get you back. 
let's wrap this up. <laughs> we hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship to Apple. <laughs> Friendship is apples? <laughs> uh, an apple a day keeps the baddies away. Okay, I think that's a wrap. All right, let's kill it. Kill it with fire.